the news and see in that in that um in that court case in Chicago it was everywhere it was big and yes he was found not guilty yes but I knew about it and I want you to know right now that my mom knew about it and if I would have asked my mother to ten, send me to an R. Kelly concert she probably would have locked me in my room until I came to my motherfucking senses once again, this is me going back to parents not acknowledging their role in helping their kids make the dumbest freaking decisions. There would have been no way on God's green earth that my mother would have bought a ticket to R. Kelly's motherfucking concert. Let alone, let alone let me go to a concert. Or tell her that I want to be a singer and R. Kelly is going to be my producer. And I'm trying to figure it out. I'm trying. I'm I'm literally looking for the part of me that is okay with these parents defending their dumb ass excuses and their actions for allowing their children to be around this man. And I am a mother. I'm letting you know right now. Because if you don't have children... I am, and I'm not one of those people that believe if you don't have children, you can't have an opinion about something about children. But the truth is, yes, you can think all you want to do if this was my child, if, if, and if, and if. But if you don't have a child, you really don't know. I'm telling you right now, neither one of my kids can ask me to go to a motherfucking R. Kelly concert. It would never happen. It wouldn't happen. The only way they would be able to go is to sneak. And then... To go to uh, one of the one of the poor victims uh, talk about she flew to Chicago. She snuck. How do you sneak a flight? Who? How does it happen? What is going on? Where? What kind of money? What is? I listen. I don't understand it. I'm I'm being honest here, people. And people can be upset with me. You can tweet me. You can leave all the comments you want. But I don't understand it. I blame the parents. I'm letting you know I blame the parents. I blame R. Kelly and I blame the parents. That's it. And I, and I also blame all the other bitch-ass adults in these children's lives. And in R. Kelly's lives who sat back, you sat back, you sorry, sorry souls. You sat back while this man had 15, 16, 14 year old girls in his room, in his hotel, in his party bus. Are you out? I just I, listen to me. I don't understand it. I don't understand it. I need someone I need someone to break down to me the thought process of these parents. And you up here crying, my child, my child. You need to be in jail with him. I want parents charged with allowing their children to be abused, for allowing their children to be violated. You allowed your child to be with a known Predator. He was known, people. It was known. I don't want to hear, but he was acquitted. But, 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 but my ass. And this is the issue within the black community. Uncle John, everybody, everybody know Uncle John touched us. Everybody. Uncle John been touching. Uncle John is 70. And Uncle John been touching since great, great Aunt Jean was born, okay? He been touching since since they know. I mean, even the little kids know. Oh, Uncle John, we don't go near him. Uncle John like little kids, but Uncle John at the barbecue. Uncle John is at the birthday parties. Uncle John is staying over because he lived too far. Okay, this is Uncle John. And nobody wants to be accountable for the fact that you allowed this man in your children's life. Now, like I, unfortunately, yes, there were some girls in there in the docu-series that, yes, they snuck. Okay, they snuck out. Parents, single parents working, you know, going to, um, you know, the ones who lived in Chicago, going to, you know, the trial and stuff like that. I, um, I, I cannot you know, honestly say that that's not impossible. 
you know, that parents, um, that parents didn't know about that. But what I'm talking about is the ones that knew. I saw someone on Twitter, uh, they tweeted, R. Kelly is the rich, talented version of way too many of the uncles, cousins, and family members black people have traumatized their children uh, repeatedly to protect, and they all deserve to be accountable. Yes, that tweet, I wish I could like that tweet 150,000 times, because that is the truth. That is what it is in these black communities we sit here and we defend and we allow black men black women black artists black politicians to do and say what they want because they're black god forbid we let you know that just because we the same color, I will not allow you to disrespect me, disrespect my lifestyle, disrespect my child, disrespect my choices. When are we going to acknowledge the role that we play within our own community? When are we going to acknowledge it? You know when? When there's none of us left, when there's one motherfucking black person left on this earth, then we going to talk about it. I'm looking at some of the older women, the ones, uh, the 33 year old who quit her job to be with this man, this man who has been accused of molesting and, uh, keeping hostage children, the 35 year old who said she was a die hard fan. Why are you a die hard fan of a known child molester? I don't understand it. I don't understand it. I need someone to explain it to me because I am confused. There is no excuse. None. These young girls, we're stupid when we're young. We're dumb. I've been there. I am a survivor. Five years. I was beat down, spit on, stomped on. Five years, physically, mentally, verbally, every ounce of me was taken and thrown. I was young and I was dumb and I was afraid and people knew, people saw. The silence that you sit back when you know what is going on in someone's lives, when you know things are being done. But what can I do? What do you mean, what can you do? You can stand up for your fellow brothers and sisters and say, no, enough is enough. No more. Stop it. That is what you could do. You could tell your child that it's not their fault that Uncle Joe or Auntie Kim touched you. You are not the problem. They are the problem. They have a problem. They need to go to jail. They need to go to treatment. They need to be kept away. That is what you can do. You can tell these children that they are not the problem. You can also tell them, it's my fault. I want one parent to say, I wanted one parent to say, it is my fault. I encouraged my daughter to be with that man. I wanted my daughter to be the next Beyonce, the next Celine, the next Tina Turner. And I did not care that R. Kelly was a known child molester, was a known child predator. I wanted parents to be honest on that docuseries. I wanted them to say, I didn't care. Or I didn't believe that 14-year-old, that 13-year-old, that 16-year-old. I didn't believe it. I wanted them to be honest about where they fucked up. I did not choose my abuser. There was no sign that said, hey, I am a woman beater. I would never... I can't even think that I would allow a person to assault my kids and be quiet. I literally can't even fathom the thought. 
I cannot fathom my child coming to me talking about R. Kelly going to be at our next arena and she won a ticket because all her friends are going. I would have knocked the sense out and back in. It wouldn't have happened. And I'm still trying to understand where these parents were coming from. I want to because I am a mom. So I want to know how other moms were thinking. Because we don't think alike. We not the same. And I am also a child of molestation. And the only good part about it is that I don't remember it. But I went through a lot as a young child. I was taken away from my mom and a few things went on. But I told an adult at two years old that her boyfriend was touching me. At two years old, I expressed. And nothing was done. What more would I have needed to say at that age? And I guess the only blessing is that I don't have any memory of it. But the fact that other people can say, you did say that. What did you do about it though? Nothing. I'm two. I'm making it up in my head. It's just magic. But I do have memory of being a a a victim of the domestic violence. I do remember the five years that I endured of abuse. And it doesn't mean that my kids won't meet someone who's going to treat them that way. But we will be having this discussion. We will be knowing that the first time is the last time. We will also be knowing Uncle John John will not be babysitting. And we also won't be making it that all black men or all men do this. Because the the issue I used to have is when, you know, mothers used to say, oh, don't wear that in front of him. You know, don't wear that in front of these men. Because apparently all men, all men like little girls, false. When you start implanting in your children's head that they got to be a kind of way because there's a man around. That to me is also a problem. If you feel a kind of way about a particular man in your home, whether it's your boyfriend, your cousin, your uncle, your co-worker, that man should not be in your home. Your kids should not be around them at their house. What I'm talking about like if they got friends or something. If you feel a kind of way, then they shouldn't be there. But making little, dropping little things in their brain, you don't think this stuff follows us? You don't think as grown women we look at it? It's no different than saying I should be able to wear what I want to wear to work and look how I want to look at work and not have to worry about going in and somebody smacking my ass and somebody telling me that they want to touch me and somebody grabbing their balls and saying, ooh, you're making me hard. These are the things you implanted me as a child. You tell me that if I dress this way, this is what this man is going to do to me. If I look at this way, this is what he's going to do. If I'm playing jump rope and I got little shorts on, the neighbor is going to want me. No, I don't want to live my life dressed and looking the way you want me looking for no man, for no boy. I'm going to dress how I want. I'm going to look how I want. I'm going to go where I want and you're going to keep your motherfucking hands off me. You're going to keep your hands off my child and you're going to keep your hands off these other girls. Stop making me the problem. Don't make me the problem and don't make every man the problem. Don't implant in these girls' heads that they ain't no good men out here. That everybody wants to touch some little girl. And also stop pretending like there ain't no women out here who do the same bullshit. Who over here touching these little boys. If you're not going to address all of the issues. Don't address any of these issues. You got people like what Scott Disick dating the Richie girl. What is she? 19 years old. He's a good looking man. You could probably get any person you want. But this is what you want. You want this motherfucking teeny bopper who don't know her ass from her elbow. 
I mean, we just want to keep it silent. I, uh, one of the women on there, she talked about Elvis Presley. First of all, I just want to know because I wasn't a huge fan of Elvis and I really didn't follow his story. I didn't know Priscilla was a teenager. You keep this shit under wraps. It's just quiet. And she named a f-